Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. This night, we start, begin to look at the making of God's battle axe. The making of God's battle axe. The making. That's why we are singing that song. Make me a battle axe. Kept, Lord, in thy quiver. Tried, trimmed, sharpened in thy furnace. Meat for my master's use. We're going to read our passage again. We have started reading Jeremiah chapter 51, but we're reading it and we're also going to read several other passages that deals with God saying, I will make you my battle axe. But let's start from Jeremiah 51 again. We read verse 20 and we go on until verse 23. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you I will break the nation in pieces. With you I will destroy the kingdoms. With you, I will break in pieces the horse and its rider. With you, I will break in pieces the chariot and its rider. With you, also, I will break in pieces man and woman. With you, I will break in pieces old and young. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. With you also, I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you, I will break in pieces the farmer and his yoke of oxen. And with you, I will break in pieces governors and rulers. Whereas yesterday we said, we saw the three recurrences with you, with you, with you. I will, I will, I will break, break nations, break the kingdoms. We see a scope of what God is speaking about. That he wants to do with your life. We see a divine possibility of what God says he can use your life to accomplish. We see what is far, far bigger than your present strength, your present experience, that God is capable. Or bringing you into. By his power. But now. The question for us is. How does God make. How does he make. His battle acts. What is the process. Of the making. Of his battle acts. Where does he get them. How does he prepare them. And 
this will lead us onto a few issues that we need to talk about tonight. If we don't finish it, we trust that God will lead us furthermore as we go ahead in our meeting even tomorrow by the grace of God. But the first thing in the making of any man to become an instrument in God's hand is what I call divine willingness. The first issue in the making of any man. The first critical prerequisite in becoming anything in the hand of God is divine willingness. What do I mean by divine willingness? The willingness of God. The determinate counsel of God. The divine agreement of the almighty God that I want to do something with your life. May I first establish that nobody can make himself what God is not willing to make him. No matter how you try, no matter how you strong and struggle, no matter how you envy someone else, it's not by power. It's not by might. It's not of him that runneth, nor of him that willeth, but it's of God that showeth mercy. You can't become what God is not willing to make you. It is not about doing anything. It's not about human energy. It's not about human particular arrangement. I want to become this. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to be that. No. What has brought any man to wheresoever he is in the purposes of God is divine willingness. This divine willingness, I am not able tonight to go into the complete discussion of it. What will God see before he responds to make a man? What is it that attracts God to a man? What is it that mobilizes God and says, I will use this man? There are many things which we cannot discuss about particularly tonight, but I just want to note with you that you cannot become what God has not made you. And you cannot make yourself what God is not willing to make you. A lot of people, they struggle in life. They compete in life to become what God is not willing to make them. And when they have tried and tried and tried, they get exhausted and they get broken and scattered because they have not located what is divine willingness for their lives. Now, why am I bringing this to you as a young man? As a young man, if you miss the divine willingness for your life, you will have wasted your years. You will have wasted your opportunities. And you will have wasted the peculiarity that is unique for your life. So, when a man begins to find out what is the divine willingness for my life, what is God happy to make me? What is God desiring to make of my life? And you are able to key into it. And you are able to enter into what God has determined to make you. Then everything begins to happen effortlessly. Everything begins to progress 
deliberately according to plan and according to the direction that God has determined. And why is it critical to discover God's divine willingness for your life as a young man? It is because God said, I know, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think about you. I know the program for which I have set your life. But another version say, I alone knows the plan that I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil. Sometimes you are thinking, this is what I want to be. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. But when your own willingness contradicts divine willingness, you'll be moving at loggerhead. You'll be hitting roadblocks because you are going contrary to what God says, I will make you. So in the making of God's battle acts, or in the making of any vessel for God, the first thing to know and to settle down with, what is the divine willingness for my life? What does God actually want me to be? What does God want my life for? So that I can cooperate with God and let it happen. Hallelujah. Why? This is a very critical issue. Several young people have wasted their years. Several people have become middle-aged. Because they never submitted to the divine will and divine willingness. They thought they can do something to turn the hand of God in order to make him do what he is not willing to make them. Sister, brother, now that you are young, now at this critical time, when you are yet finding out what, where, how is my life supposed to be? This is the first thing to seek to discover. I call it divine willingness. I will have called it God's will. But I did not call it God's will because the divine willingness is the outworking of God's will. Let me tell you, God will never have a willingness to do anything that is not first and foremost his will. Oh my God, did you get me now? God will never be willing to support what is not in his will. God we never be willing to facilitate, to provide for, or to initiate what is not in his will. But when God's will tallies with his willingness, are you understanding that now? God mobilizes himself, gathers all that it will take for his will in your life to come to pass. So if the will of God has 
rallied with God's willingness. Are we together? Everything worked well. Why did I not just call God's will? God's will is the, is the overall cancer that God has determined about you. But God's willingness is the outworking. But you see, God's willingness, uh, I don't know how to put it so that it will not be complicated. God's willingness is also time, timely. Sometimes, this is the overall will of God for your life. But in God's willingness, this is not the time God is willing to do it. Oh, you didn't get me. It is the will of God for you to marry, for example. God has a will and he wants you to marry. That's okay. But, in God's willingness, is it God now willing at this time to bring you into marriage? He said, even though I have a will for her to marry. But this is not my willingness for her at, at this point. Did you understand that now? Even though it is the will of God for you to marry. But when it is not yet God's willingness at this time to lead you into marriage. If you step into marriage, you will still miss it. Because now, you are moving outside the willingness of God for the time. Did you get what I'm talking about now? Somebody, maybe you have a vision that God is going to use you somewhere, maybe in Australia. It may even be the will of God. But as at now, it is not in God's willingness to send you to Australia. In his plan, what God is willing to do now is to place you somewhere else in order to prepare you and prepare Australia for you. But because you just saw Australia say it's the will of God, then you start rooting and pressing and running to go to Australia. You have missed it. You say, but God, I think it's your will. Why are you not facilitating me? He said, because it is not my willingness at this time. Am I communicating with you? So when God said, I will make you. The divine willingness is the first thing to discover and to key into in order to become an axe in the hand of God. Am I communicating with you? Eh? So, how do I make sure I am operating in God's divine willingness? How am I going to be sure as a young man that what I am currently involved in is what God is actually willing to do with me now? So that you will not keep knocking your head against obstacles. So that you will not continue to drive your car uphill against traffic. So that you will not be swimming your life against the current. So that you will not waste precious years of your life just struggling outside the will of God. Number one. 
For you to arrive at God's willingness, you are coming with a total, a life of total submission to the wisdom of God. How many of you know that God does everything he does in perfect wisdom? Do you know that? You don't know it. God never act outside wisdom. The wisdom of God for every life is the perfect wisdom and is the best way of achieving whatever was to be achieved at a particular given time. Are you with me? So the first matter in stepping into the divine willingness of God in becoming a battle axe is to accept and submit to the wisdom of God. To submit to God's own way of doing what he wants to do with your life. By saying, yes Lord, I know you love me better whatsoever may be. I will follow you. I will follow you. I know you love me better whatsoever may be. I will follow him. I will follow Jesus. I know. He loves me better whatsoever may be. I will follow him. Even when it doesn't look clear. Even when my own eyes is not able to see beyond my nose. But I have resigned my life into his wisdom. I have agreed that God knows what he's doing and he knows why he is doing it and he knows how to do it. And I say, yes, Lord. Go on doing what you say you want to do with my life. I know you love me better, whatsoever may be. I will trust you. I will trust you, Lord. I know you love me better, whatsoever may be. I will trust you. I will trust you, Lord. I know. You love me better, whatsoever may be. I will trust you. Somebody is helping me to sing, I will trust in you. But that's not what I want to say. I will trust you. You see, <laughs> there's a difference between trusting in God and trusting him. They look alike. You see, when you trust a man, when you trust him, you trust his wisdom. You trust his methodology. You trust his decision. Even when you don't understand it, you believe that he knows what he's doing. I trust you. Are you understanding because I trust you, I don't query why you choose to do what you are choosing to do with my life. My dear brothers and sisters, to work to become God's instrument and you will not waste your life for too many years and you will not have many accidents on your journey you need to key 
into what is God willing to do. Now, our brother took time this morning to share with us the life of Joseph, a young man. A young man that has a dream of what God said to him. His dream was so clear that somehow, somehow, the moon, the stars, even the sun, we do what? We bow before him. His father said, do you mean that even me and your mother, we will bow to you? He said, I didn't say that. But that's the dream I dreamt. And it was clear that that's God willing to make something out of this young man. Huh? But you know the way, the way, the way to step into it is different from what anybody could have thought. Am I right? Suddenly, when it was time for God to start the process of making him what God was showing him, can you see the journey? His father just called him one afternoon. Joseph, yes sir, can you go and check the welfare of your brethren? Let me, they have gone on the field. We don't know what's happening to them. Go and check how they are doing and come back. You remember that? And he was going, not planning to sleep. That journey that he took that day, he didn't plan that he was going to sleep. He never expected that that journey was going to last for more than two days. It was just to check his brothers somewhere there and come back. And when he got to Dothan, where they were going, he didn't see them. As he was about to go back, he met one man. He said, they said, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for my brothers. Ah, your brothers, we heard them discuss that they were going to go down to Dothan with their flock. So check them there. That was how he got there. For him, his father said, go and check them. And he said, here am I. Can you imagine that? And from that moment, his journey to glory have started. But that journey to glory did not start the way anybody would have thought. His brother looked at him and said, look at this man. And they sold him out as a slave and they ate the money. And yet when you read the Bible very well, the Bible says, the Lord, eh? the Lord sent a man ahead of them whom they sold as a slave. The divine willingness to make Joseph a battle axe in his hand. Did not appear as the way human beings would have organized it. As a young man, can I beg you to come to a point where you are going to be able to say, God. Since you say you are willing to make me your battle axe, I want to submit to your divine willingness. Your divine willingness will be regulated by your divine timing, by your divine wisdom, by your divine choice, and by your own way. I am willing to submit to your divine willingness. Will you do that tonight before we can go? And I have young people who are saying, Lord, I'm not going to struggle with you. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I want you to do what you are willing to do with my life. Now that I'm young, now that I have not put many things, you know, on fire, 
Now that I am flexible, now that you can bend me anyhow you like, let what you want to do now with my life, let it be the issue that I'm also willing for you to do. Would there be somebody who will pray that kind of prayer? Eh? Right. Now, why we rejoice over Joseph? Why we thank God that he went as a slave? God was with him in the house of Potiphar. God was with him in the prison. God was, God, God was with him and all of that was going on. And the Bible noted that it was God that made them to subject him to all that they subjected him to. It was God that was preparing him and trying him. Can you see one man who resisted divine willingness for many years? It was Joseph's father. Joseph's father. Eh? Who is Joseph's father? Jacob. God wants to make Jacob. In fact, God wants to call himself the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's the plan. And when God manifested himself to this man, God declared to him what God was willing to do with his life. God told him, this is what I'm willing to make you. This is what I'm willing to do with you. This is what I'm willing to bring you into in your lifetime. God spoke to him. But you know, Jacob has a very strong will. May God not allow your strong will to oppose the divine willingness. I want to tell you something. Can I tell you? Divine willingness <laughs> will crush your will. But unfortunately, it may wound you. Unfortunately, it may waste your life. You may waste your time. You may not enter where all you ought to enter at the point you ought to enter it because of a strong will that is that is unbroken and un un is unsubmissive to the purpose of God. And a lot of people, I see that they are not the best they could be for God simply because their strong will tampers with the divine willingness at the time. Joseph, I mean Jacob, when God appeared to him, instead of him to say, Lord, what will you have me do? Eh? He saw an angel descending and ascending. He saw the ladder. He saw God speaking to him. Instead of him to say, Lord, what will you have me do? You know what he did? He just woke up. I made one vow and said, God, if you will go with me where I'm going. You know, I'm going somewhere before. And I've not, I'm not shelving my journey. If you will follow me to where I'm going. If you will give me enough food to eat. And if you escort me. And if you will bring me back to my house. Then, when, then will you be my God, not now. You know, my heart is very enlarged towards you. The reason is because it is not by coincidence that God is meeting you at this point. Not by coincidence. And it's not by, by chance that you are encountering this kind of word of God at this point in your life. 
Do you know? Our sister told to us in the morning. Two months to engagement. Two months to Lobola. God encountered her. You don't know what, what we are talking about. Do you know that once you are married, you cannot unmarry. You are not hearing me very well. Once you mismarry, you have mismarried. And it's for life. Can I tell you? Marriage is not a plug you put in a socket and you unplug. Even if you get into marriage and after two months you suddenly discover that, ah, I made a mistake. You have made a mistake. It's a lifelong mistake. Cannot be corrected. Cannot. Even if you went somewhere and they divorce you, you are joking. Forever, your name has changed. What is your name? Divorcee. Forever. How could you marry two months? And two months has changed your status. Forever. A young sister that was about to enter to the medical school just went on holiday. And somehow, somehow, she got herself entangled with one, 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 one boy who was a dropper from school. And just like that. Oh my God, it's so painful to me. She was divergent by that boy. And if it was just that, but well, she became pregnant. And there was this kind of pregnancy that are stubborn. As if the baby said, me, I have come to stay. No matter what you do, I've come to stay. You must bomb me, you must bomb me, you must bomb me. could be done. Nothing succeeded. The pregnancy stayed. That's how she could not return to the medical school. The only result she had was the old level result. What you, the result you have to do matric. That's what she had. After being four years, four years in the university. She dropped out. She did not even come out with junior degree. She had to go back to do matric. And then she couldn't make it again. She didn't want the baby. So she refused to breastfeed the baby. So that nobody will the baby will not be attached to her at all. She hated the baby. But the baby is a boy. You know, you know when I say the baby is a boy, you don't understand. You see, the trouble is that a boy is not like a girl. You know the matter? A girl can be married out and fizzled out. If you are a girl, even if you don't know your father's name, you will soon have a surname. Am I right? You will soon have a surname. And if, you, if God helps you and you marry a correct man, you will have an identity. Identity that you can be proud of. Once a woman is married, nobody asks, what's your father's name again? Am I right? 
Nobody worries you about your father's name because you are married. And if you marry into a good family, that family name becomes your family name. But a boy. Forever! People are asking, what's your father's name? Where do you come from? Who is your father? Where is your village? Where is your identity? Hey! Terrible. And this sister, this lady, she finally gave her life to Christ again. But we cannot undo what she has done. When anybody came near her to marry her, when they are talking and talking and talking, and they discover that there is a boy in the village, they excuse themselves. At 36, nobody has married her yet. She couldn't continue school. She was only doing these uh, short-term courses. Some of you are doing short-term courses that will not be accredited. Courses that has no accreditation. When they put everything you say you did, I did one two-week course and they gave me a diploma. Who, who told you that a two-week course? <laughs> It was a diploma. You are just wasting your time. I'm telling you. Who do you ever see that became anything with all of those kind of things? Number one, the courses are so costly. You pay so much for nothing. Such certificate, they will decorate it so much because there's nothing there. But you know, when you pile up all those short, 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 short empty certificates together, even in your heart, something is still telling you that you are a dropout. When a man's life contradicts divine willingness, that has to do with divine timing, divine wisdom, divine way, and divine methodology. Hey, that life, even if it will ever arrive, it will arrive there one day. Do you know that God planned to make Jacob great? God planned to bless his life. But because he has a will of his own, very strong will, he never said, God, what will you have me do? I think he was afraid that if I ask God what he will have me do, God may tell him to do what he does not want to do. You know, some of you are sitting here, you don't want to pray. Say, Lord, 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 do you want me to marry that man? You won't pray it because you know that God will say, don't. I say, I don't want God to even tell me I don't want God to tell me that, uh, no. And I don't want to go to all these preachers that will tell me, no. So you know what you have done? You know what you have done? And I know you. You will have arranged everything. When it remains one week, you will bring your card. Say, Tata. Tata, my wedding. I just want you to bless us. They come to me like that. They don't know that I'm also, I'm also not like that. I'm not cheap tata. I said, ah, since you have planned it, and you know where you are going, don't let me put my hand in it, so that you will not say, tata, even pray for me. You see, my prayer, I am very serious about my prayer. <laughs> I don't want my prayer to be identified with a man who is walking contrary to the will of God. 
I don't want my presence. That's why sometimes I don't go everywhere. I don't like my presence. I'm not in anything. I'm not important. But I'm important enough not to cause my presence to baptize a man who is walking against the divine willingness of God. So that he will not also add me to the number of people that encourage her or him to misbehave. How does God make his battle access? Divine willingness. What God is willing to do that you are willing for him to do in your life. In my mind, I think, I'm just, I just, I know. I'm not just thinking, I, I know that if D Jacob had asked God and said, Lord, I am here now. What's your will for me? Which of these two girls are you planning for me to marry? I know. God is likely to have said, Leah is the woman that carry your seed. But you know what the problem? Leah's eye is weak, they said. She's not sharp. She doesn't look quick, 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 quick. She doesn't look beautiful. She looks dull of a kind. She doesn't look sharp. She's not highly light complexion. So, you know, if Leah and Rechi, if they are here now, you see how Rechi will be moon like this. <laughs> and so, Rechi, you know, can easily attract attention to herself. You know Rechi? Uh -huh. Rachel, she is very attractive. So, even if a blind man comes around, you will notice her. How many of you? The Holy Spirit is pointing a different sister to you. Yeah, but it's too... You know? <laughs> That's why you keep pushing. Your eyes is on the other one. It is sharp and shiny. But your destiny is not there. You are working against divine willingness. God is not willing for you to enter there. But your eye is there. Your heart is going there. You delay yourself. When I look at the life of Jacob, I say, Oh, this is a man that heaven wanted something to happen with. But because he has a different agenda. So he went. He donated seven years to marry Rachel. At the end of the year, seven years. The family. They sat together and said, in our country, we can't give a junior before the senior. And the boy should have known that we don't do it. If he has been here for seven years, he ought to know our tradition that Rachel cannot marry first. Even though he seemed not to be looking at Leah, Leah is the one we are going to package for him. You see, do you know that at the point that we are bringing Leah, if this brother had knelt down and said, God, it was Rachel I came for. See what they are doing with you. They are brought Leah. Is this your will for me? Are you willing for me to marry Leah? So that I can settle my case and go. You know God will have said. Take your Leah. That's the one. That I planned to bless you with. That Rachel you see. 
has no destiny with you. She will not follow you into the promised land. I have seen her end from the beginning. Do you know that the divine willingness of God is not arbitrary because God sees the end of every matter before the beginning of it. I want to tell you a story this morning, this night because I want God to help you to step into becoming God's part to us. It's very important. But let me finish the issue with that man. Instead of agreeing, he said, Lord, so what's your will for me? If it is there, Lord, I will take it. Even if he had opened up to God and said, God, but I don't like Leah. I don't love her. But if it is your will, nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. Who prays such a prayer? Who prays such a prayer? Jesus! Which means, it's not every time that the divine willingness settles with your desire. But if you want to become a battle axe in the hand of God, you must constantly override your convenient desires with God's willingness. To say, God, if this is what you are willing for me to do, it's okay. We saw that example in Christ Jesus. But that night, Jacob, he said, if I pray, it's likely that the Lord will say, take care. So he didn't pray. I will not pray. Because I know what God is likely to say. I will not pray. So he did it. But he slept with the girl. And the following day, he started crying for Rachel. He said, well, since you have already married Leah, you cannot unmarry her. He said, just one night, he said, ah, one night actually is marriage. You have married her. I'm sorry, you must go on. He cried. He said, what will I do now? What will I do now? What will I do now? This is a to marry Some of you, the course you are doing is clashing with divine willingness for your life. And it is because of your ambition. Your ambition that you have not surrendered to God's will. It's because of your competition with someone that you are now wasting your youth. The career that you have put your life into now. Every time you need them to pray, something in you is say, young man, our will for you is that you will be this. You say, mm -mm. No. No. This is what I'm willing to be. And if God cannot do what I will for him to do, let's leave it. Whereas God is the ancient of days. God never grows old. 1,000 years with God is like one day. That's what you don't know. For God, He can afford to watch you go round and round and round and round for 10 years, 20 years. Whenever you want to do His will, oh, you come back here. Oh, Jesus, I have come again. I surrender. Oh, God said, are you ready now? He said, I surrender. I said, okay. If you are surrendering, or go back to where? Ah! Lord, I thought you have changed. He said, no, we don't change. 
God doesn't change. Everything he chooses to do, he has calculated it. There's no need to change because he never makes mistakes. Whereas God is the ancient of days, you are not. Your own years are rolling. You are the one growing old. God doesn't. Suddenly. He went for a check again for another seven years. And they started fighting. He hated Rachel. I mean, he hated Leah. And God said, since Leah had been hated, I will close the womb of Rachel and open the womb of Leah. So Leah was delivering children. All the boys that will, that will become anything in the life of Jacob came through Leah. And for years, Rachel with her beauty, with her sharp eye, with her perfume and everything, barren as a dry tree. Why? God's willingness is being contradicted here. Do you know that after everything, after everything, even though listen to me, God forgave Jacob, God forgave even Rachel and gave her Joseph, which was a wonderful story. And she prayed again and said, Lord, let, give me one more so that Joseph will not be a man with one ear. Let him also have a brother. I said, it's okay. But you are not part of the plan. Richard, you are not part of the plan. You are not going to enter the promised land. You are not part of it. Do you know? They traveled and traveled and traveled. It remained five miles, I suppose, to enter the land of promise. Rachel fell into this labor to bring forth a baby. Just five, five miles home. She died. She died. I wonder what Jacob did. He wept. He cried. Do you know what he was crying about? Because if he gets home now, his father will ask him, why did you delay so long? Why did it take you 21 years to marry? And he would have wanted to tell the story. You know, it was this Rachel that I really love. And she's the one that is the love of my life. But as I got there, they swindled me and put this one there. And as I married this Leah, we just Leah like that. <laughs> eh? You know, they gave me Leah. But I was telling myself that how can I come home until Rachel delivers a baby? The only reason why he stayed for another seven years there, he was waiting for Rachel to have a baby. That's why. Actually, it was after Rachel now had Joseph that he said, now that you have a baby, can we go back home? For you to know that that was worse than that. So I thought he was going to tell his father, saying, as I went and this happened, it was this Rachel I was waiting for. Only to get home. The father said, why did you come? He said, why, what is this? He broke again. He said, and the woman that my heart was longing for, that kept me there for 21 years, and I was eagerly coming home to come and show her to you for five miles away. She died and left me with an infant. Now I become a nursing father by all means. I can't even travel again because the small baby is crying. It was painful. Say, so where is the woman? Where is the woman? Say, she died. Where is her corpse? I buried her on the road. Ah! You mean all your 21 years labor is buried on the way. As a young man. 
for you to accelerate in becoming God's battle axe. Don't fight God's willingness. Don't struggle with it. I want to say to you tonight, just say, Lord, I surrender. In the early times when I started preaching the word of God, and I began to raise disciples, there was one among my earlier disciples, good brother. But when it comes to the point of his marriage, I saw something. I saw a resistance inside of his heart. There was this lady, this young lady that he wanted. No matter how we prayed about it. He said, don't talk to me. I know what I want to do. And when somebody said like that, we didn't have any authority to say no. We said, it's okay. Once that lady came into his life, something changed. The kind of things I saw God was making him and doing with him. In those years, everything went as if it went into cooler. And so, this brother started pushing. He wants to travel abroad. I said, bro, wait now. He said, no. I didn't know that the wife was there pushing. Pushed him out of fellowship. She will not come for meetings again. If I try to visit them, they say, well, you know, we don't like all these... Uh, uh, dying to Mr. Flesh. No, we want to we want to make it in life. I was wondering. We want to make it. So they went abroad. Unfortunately, everything he wanted to do abroad didn't work. He came back without any certificate. And he came back completely depressed. He came back Query whether Jesus is real or not. But it would not have been a problem, but she has a wife that was pushing him as then. So they won't relate with anybody. They were on their own. They were doing things. I've been praying. I say, God, what will you do with this brother? He said, I have a plan for him. But his will is counteracting my willingness. So everywhere, everything was just redundant. One day, I had, you know, I left the place and I am coming from very far away. God said, I'm sent, go and meet him. So I just drove straight. I did about 12 hour drive to get to the place. And I got straight to his office. I've been praying and waiting on God for him. So when I got to his office, I just, as soon as I just walked in, I sat and I said, brother, I just called him by his name. I said, brother, the Lord just asked me to come and check you. Are you still struggling? That was the question. Are you still struggling with God? Then he, he broke down. He wept that day. He said, sir, I know. I know you love me and I know God loves me. But I have problems. I said, I know your problem. But you know when you started it. You know, you know it. He said, yes. He said, about that, my marriage. I said, yes. Oh, you are married. There's nothing we can do about that. It will slow you down. So we began to pray. His heart opened. That day I was praying. There was a dangerous thing that came to my heart. And I knew it from God. But I dare not tell him. The Lord said, My will for this man has been suspended since he got married to this woman. 
If he will go forward, I have to take this woman from his life. That day, as we were praying, I knew that that sister is going to go. She's going to die. I said, Lord, please, Lord, please, please, Lord, please, Lord, you can change her, you can correct her, you can, you can make everything to fit. God said, it's not about that. It's that she has no portion in what I want this young man to be. For him to get to where I want him to get to, he has to be taken out. So, I just prayed I left. I didn't tell any man. It's not everything God tells you that you tell people. I just kept quiet and left. I went on praying and praying, writing and all of that. One day I visited them. The lady became sick. I said, Bragule, would you like to pray for my wife? You see the dilemma I have as a servant of God. I'm hearing the Lord say, this sickness is unto death. So I go there. I pray a technical prayer. <laughs> there are some technical prayers we pray. I began with a song. Things I treasure most. Say it is thine, O Lord, my way. Oh, yeah. Mm. I got them to sing the song. We were singing it. We sang and sang and sang. So I said, Lord, you are the author of life. Nobody can live longer than you want him to live. <laughs> and nobody can take a life as long as he's saying, it's my life. Lord, we are praying. Let your will be done. <laughs> you are able to keep this sister alive if it is your will. But if it is your will that she should come over, Lord, don't allow her to suffer here in sickness. And don't allow her to become the ministry of this brother. That's a technical prayer. The Lord, don't allow her to become the ministry of this brother. This brother has a ministry to fulfill. Don't allow this lady to become the ministry. Which means, Lord, don't allow him to have to be carrying this woman up and down for another several years and not be able to go anywhere. We finish praying. He said, Bragbile, the way you have prayed, something just resonated in my heart that we should change our direction of prayer. I said, how? He said, we should just be praying that God's will will be done. That if it is time for God to take our sister, I say so. Two weeks after, she went. Two things I have said, God, please prepare her to go heaven. And it happened. So when they told me and I came down, I said, brother, you remember the prayer we pray? Say yes. Saying, Father, as soon as it happened, I remember 
that prayer. And I knew that it is God. I said, okay. Say now, even though time has passed, you should have entered into the will of God as a younger man. But what you wanted has kept you waiting till now. You need to start praying and say, Lord, accelerate my years so that I will at least still enter what you want me to do. I have had different people in life. Desire contradicts divine willingness. And so they could not become the, the, the battle axe, the sharp arrow, the instrument that God planned for them. As a young man, as a young woman, as middle-aged people here, the Holy Spirit may be speaking to you. Don't delay any moment. Don't struggle with God anymore. Don't keep postponing and procrastinating the things that God will have you do. Hallelujah. Don't keep pushing. When God says, I will, I want you to key into that. I want to say, yes, Lord. Let it be done. Let your will for my life be done. Bring me into all that you want me to be. Don't allow me to waste more years so that I could arrive at your divine call at the appropriate time of it in the name of Jesus. Now, the second issue. Now, I spend time on this for one reason. Can I tell you why? Once you are in divine willingness, everything will work out. In fact, if I don't even go on to say anything more, and you have agreed with God's divine willingness to make you what he wants you to be, you will, you will be it. It will baffle people and say, ah! How did God work with this brother? It's because it's a life that has yielded to the will of God. It's a life that is dead to personal ambition. It's a life that surrendered and surrendered completely. It's a life that said, Lord, I will not struggle with you. I will not argue with you. I will not fight your will. I am yours and I'm yours all the time. Everything else I should have been saying will simply emanate from this. I want all of you to hear me. If you are in line with divine willingness, all it takes for God to make you, God will provide it. All it takes for God to make you what he wants you to be, he will provide it. He will arrange it. There's no problem about it. You will get there. But for the sake of simple emphasis, for the sake of just what you call tautology or emphasis, I would say the second issue about the divine, about becoming, becoming a battle as in the hand of God is human availability. What is the first thing? Divine willingness. What is the second one? Human availability. When a life is available and it says, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Here am I. You see the word here am I. It's a very important word in becoming anything in the hand of God. Am I communicating with you? Here am I. The word here am I means, Lord, I am available. Lord, 
I am here. I am at your disposal. I am free for whatever you want to do. Friends, am I communicating with you? Are you hearing me? Let me tell you, for any life that is available for God, there is no obstacle again. What did I say? There is no obstacle again. It doesn't matter the complications of your life. If that life says, here am I, leave God with it. It will sort you out. It will sort you out. What has been your difficulty is unavailability. I hear many people say, oh Lord, I am here. Jesus, I am here. If God dares put his finger to collect what they said they brought, he will sit and say, oh, no, 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 not now, Lord. No. Uh -uh. It's not like that. It's not like that, Lord. It's not like that. Lord, no. I didn't mean like that. I, I thought you are not going to ask. Do you know what made these disciples? Peter, Andrew, James, John, all these ones that made their, this, their, their becoming God's apostles faster is that once he said, follow me, he said, straight away. Straight away. What's the meaning of straight away? Immediately, at once, they left everything and they followed him. So one day, Jesus met another man. This rich young ruler, you remember him. What must I do to have eternal life or whatever? And Jesus told him. And what the Bible said, he turned and went away. If that man was not an apostle today, what is the reason? Unavailability. He wasn't available. He wasn't available. I hear many people say, Lord, Lord, I surrender all. But they are not available. This empty religious slogan. Lord, I am dying, oh Lord. I have heard thy voice is a lie. When you become available. When your here am I means here am I. When you're saying, Lord, anything you want to do with me, go ahead and do it. When you mean it, oh my God. There's no obstacle anymore. You will become what God said you will become. God can never fail to make you what he says he will make you. The delay that many people face in becoming anything in the hand of God is not divine unwillingness but human unavailability. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God cannot walk on what is not available to him. If as a young person this night you make yourself available to God and say, Lord, I am here. I'm hearing that you want to make me a battle axe. Lord, what will you have me do? Lord, how will you have my life to run? I'm here. Do anything you want to do with me. I am available, Lord. If human availability meets with divine willingness, there's no obstacle again. There is nothing again. In fact, I think I should just stop there. I should just stop there because everything else they are only addendum to it. You see, it is unavailability that makes even discipleship a problem to many people. It is lack of 
human availability that makes people to argue. Why should he talk to me like that? So if you read your Bible very well, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your body as what? A living sacrifice. Finish. If you bring your life as a sacrifice to God and say, God, anything you want to do with it, anyhow you want to do it, whether here or there, whether up there or down here, and if I die, I die, it's okay. If I live in your hand, I live. That's all right. If I become something in your hand because you did it, no problem. And if you made me a useless man, that's okay. If you come to that point, then there's no obstacle again. Then there's no reason why you will not become God's battle house. Then there is no reason why God will find it difficult to make something out of you, even from nothing. But how many people are available? How many people have said, Lord, from this meeting, I am here for you. I just want you to walk in my life. I just want you to make me what you want me to be. I just want you to take me to where you want to take me. I just want your will to be done, not my will again. These things that I've dealt with tonight, two things. For these two things, one is actually subsumed in the other. If a man will say, Here am I. I have come to do your will, O oh God. One thing I found with the Lord Jesus is that once he became a human, the Bible said, he became sub submissive, isn't it? Became obedient. He said, Lord, I have come to do your will. And it was that that made him to become all he became in the hand of God. And I just want to pray that you will not waste time. I want to believe God that you not waste away your own opportunity. I think God just decided to have mercy upon me. When he brought me to this point, and I said, yes, Lord, do whatever you want to do with my life. Whatever. If I die, let me die. If I become something, it's okay. If I become nothing, after all, you have bought me with a price. I came to that point. I have no reason to live again except for Jesus to live. Nothing worries me. Because even if, even if I suffer damage, it's a damage to God. I've given him my life. I remember the day I came to that point in my lifetime. I remember one, it, it was a night. I can't forget that night. I was preparing for one of my degree exams. Mm. And I sat there, I, was, I wanted to read all night. The exam is going to start 8.30 in the morning. And now I have gathered myself, I've gathered my books. And I came to, 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 to begin. I've set everything. I say, yes. I told my bed, bed, no sleep for you tonight. I'm ready. And I'm sitting there. I'm walking. And you know, I have a, share, a small bookshelf where I keep some material, some Christian books. And there was this small book, The Pursuit of God. And the Spirit of God said, pick that book. I said, no. I, I can't read a Christian novel when I need to prepare for a degree exam. I first argued. The Lord said, pick that book. I picked that book. They go to chapter 3. As I went to chapter 3, the blessedness of possessing nothing. Hey! 
You know, as I read the book, a matter came. God was saying, you want me to use you? I say, yes, I've been telling you to use me. He said, tonight, let's decide it. Ah, this night, The chapter was not too long, but I couldn't finish it in hours. And that chapter brought me to a point where God is saying, I either have all of you, I have nothing of you. 99% surrender of your life is not acceptable. Because the 1% you are keeping nullifies your 99 surrender. Hey! If he is not the Lord of all, he's not the Lord at all. He said, I am the Lord. I tolerate no rival. I cannot share you with anybody. I say, ah, ah. God. I say, God. Tonight, tonight you want to take all. He said, yes. And if I don't have all, I don't have anything at all. <clears throat> I stood up in my little room. I walked up and down. I knew something is about to happen that night. I said, God, you mean you want to take the whole of my life? He said, and if I don't have it all, I don't have any at all. I knelt down to pray. The prayer, you know, the author of that book, A.W. Tozer, at the end of the chapters, he normally put a prayer, which was his own prayer. So I wanted to kneel down to pray. And I was reading what this man was saying. I opened my mouth. Nothing came out. Fear in my heart. I said, so I'm going to lose all. And I hear a verse say, I'm going to see profit a man. If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. Or what will you give in exchange for your soul? Hey! That night I said, God, so I opened my mouth and said, Lord, be thou exalted, O Lord. And let your glory be above all my earth. I said, from this night, O God, I resign all that I have. From now on, you will have me and there will be no reservation. And only when I said that to God, I had peace. Now it's 5 a.m. From 10 p.m. 5 a.m. And I said, okay, so Lord, now that it's not about me again, what about this degree now? He said, it's no more your degree. I said, Lord, do you want me to get out of here without anything? He said, that's not what I'm saying. I'm going to give you one of the best degree in this university and in that department, but it will never be yours. Ah, God. But nevertheless, the exam you are going to do in the morning, these, these, these are the issues. This uh, question is coming out, that question is coming out, that question is coming out. This question is coming out. There are four questions. You're going to be asked to answer three. So prepare the three you want to choose now. Can you imagine? So I made all the three questions I want to choose out of four. I walked into the exam hall. All the things that you told me, four, all of them were out. All the three I've prepared, they're all there. I wrote. The lecturer marked and marked and marked. Couldn't give me anything less than 92%. 
And so the man was so excited. But as they were telling me and congratulating me, I'm hearing, you know it's on the altar. You know it's now on the altar. Hi. You know now it's on the altar. May the Lord give you understanding. When should you be available now that you are young? Don't hope to make yourself available after many years have been wasted. Don't get out of this meeting saying, I will do it in two years' time. Two years may have damaged something. But can I tell you something? There is nothing you put in God's hand that he does not know how to manage. When divine willingness and human availability meets in a man's life, there's no obstacle and there's no limit to what God can make him. As I stop here to pray tonight with you, how do I become God's battle axe? These two must come together. Every other thing that happens only are inched on these two. And if you sincerely come to this point and you are not just singing about it in the mouth, I can be sure that God will never, never fail to honor what he says he will make about your life. But if you are half-hearted, if you are the one that says surrender all, or you keep some, God, because of who he is, he cannot take the 90%. He will do nothing with the 99. He said, but God, why are you not doing something with this one? He said, he is not on the altar. I said, but we have 99 of it. He said, no, 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 no. Even the one that is not here, the one percent that is not here, nullifies this 99. Brothers, let me tell you the truth. Don't give your life half. It's not useful. Don't give 70% of it. It's of no use. Don't give 90% of it. God doesn't need it. Don't give 99 of it. You will think that I've given him all. I've given him 99. It's only this one thing. Just this one thing. This one thing. Jesus looked at that man. That rich young realized. Only one thing. Only one thing thou lackest. Only one thing. And I was wondering if somebody has done everything else. And it's only one thing. And that one thing disqualified him. Don't you know that that one thing is a prerequisite one thing. One thing. One out of hundred is enough to nullify the ninety-nine. I decide to share with you this night because I see where you are going. I can see what God is saying about I can see a future here. I can see God rising to make something out of your life. But he can't start walking when part of your life is somewhere else. Just, just understand it. I pray you understand it. He doesn't begin to do any serious work with a life that has been shared. God does not work with a shared life. If he doesn't have it all, he keeps it waiting. But he has not said, but I've been, I've been telling God to use me. God said, when? Say, but I gave, I gave most of my life. Yeah? Most. Most, thank you. We don't take most. We take all. Am I reading the Bible to you completely? Say, whosoever he be of you, that forsake not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. It's all. If he is not the Lord of all, he's not the Lord at all. I stop here tonight to ask can God continue the process 
of making you a battle axe? I'm asking a question. Can God continue? Eh? Maybe I should put it the other way. Should God continue? Eh? Alright. If God will continue to progress with this matter, he needs you. How many? All. All of me. All of me. All of my life. All of my heart. All of my affection. All. Not half. Not 90%. Not 99%. Not 99.9. If he doesn't have it all, let everything be suspended until all is brought. That's how it happens. But those who give him all, come and see the acceleration with which he walks. Those who close their eyes and say, Lord, have it all. When I said, Lord, have it all. God said, yes, that's all right. I thought he was going to tell me not to go back to the class. He didn't. He said, take me there. In fact, that was the time. And I began to have very, very tough calls. That was the time different six external examiners were coming to, to check my work. And none of them rated me less than 84 and above. And they said, this, this one, this one is a genius. But when I want to fly on it, he said, remember, it's all on the altar. When I want to take it back, because people say, ah, you are too valuable to give it to God. You are too brilliant to surrender it to God. And I was being tempted to say, oh God, you know, you know. God said, mm, do you think I take second class? Do you think I take dropouts? So when you are finishing and you say he deserves the best, I wonder whether you understood what you said. God doesn't take dropouts. If God comes to a family, he will look for the best. That's what bothers many family people. They do understand that if God comes to your family now, there are some people that you are willing that God will take. Those problematic boys. Those that didn't get my trick. You say, if he wants to go to Bible school, let God take her. Let God take that one. But this one that is promising to be a lawyer, Lord, mm -mm, mm -mm. So if God comes to that house and he really wants to take somebody, he will not take the one that is struggling. He will go for the lawyer. He will go for the best. Because he deserves the best. Two things. Two legs. Unto the making of God's battle earth. Divine willingness. Human availability. And the two legs stand. When this one has not settled... Willingness of God cannot work. He holds it. Thank you, Father, for this night. Thank you because you are God who is here. Thank you because of what you intend to do with the lives of young people. Thank you for where you are going. Thank you, Lord. Thank you this night for the liberty to share your heart to us. Thank you, Lord, that there are lives sitting in this meeting that are critical for what you want to do. But you can't go on until you have it all on the altar.
these lives are young, yet undamaged, uncrippled. You are saying, can I have it all on my altar so that I can begin my work? Lord, I pray tonight, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Father in heaven, have your way. Some have delayed and procrastinated and pushed and held on for years. And they are stepping out when it's almost late. Jacob almost missed it all. I remember that night the angel said, let me go for the day now breaks. Then he started crying, I will not let you go until you bless me. He had to be a crippled man to enter the land of promise. Because he struggled for years. Lord, this night. I don't think you want to break somebody's leg. Before they can walk with you. Lord, please help us tonight. Lord, help us tonight. Do what no man can do in our midst tonight. There's that young lad, that, that young man that you are saying. I'm waiting to have it all on the altar then I can proceed with what I want to do with you. I'm waiting to have it all on the altar so that I can go ahead to manifest my purpose. I'm waiting, not for a mouth talk, but a genuine heart surrender so that I can now move on to demonstrate what I plan to do with your life. Lord, please have it. Have your way with me, Lord. Thank you for hearing this prayer. Now, I don't know what you want to do. I don't know whether you are inside this meeting. You are saying, no more time to procrastinate. Even tonight, Lord, I want you to have it all. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you. Take away my fear. Have it, Lord. Lord, have it. Have all of it. I have been bargaining for many years. And the more I do, the more I postpone what I should have become in your hand. Lord, have it all. Thank you, brother. Let this night be a night that God will say, I have it all on my table. I have it all on the altar. I have it all. I have it all. I can now go on to do what I plan to do. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest Oh, be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your, your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and a peace and sit rest as you yield him your body and soul. Will you walk with the Lord 
In the light of His word, and a peace and contentment always. You must do His sweet will to be free from all ill on the altar. Your all you must lay. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice? Your heart, does the spirit control? Control. I can only be blessed. Oh, be perfectly blessed. As, As I yield in my body and soul, oh, whoever can know what the Lord will bestow, all the blessings for which we have prayed, till our body and soul. He don't fully control and I all on the altar is laid. Is your all? Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit. Control. You can only be blessed. I have peace and sweet rest as you lead in your body and soul. Who can tell all the Lord? He will send from above, and our happy hearts will be made of the fellowship with we shall share our taste when our all on the earth. All time is laid, is my all, is my all, on the altar of sacrifice laid, your heart does the spirit control, I can only be blessed. And a peace and such rest as I need you, my body and soul. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, this night. Holy Spirit, this night, this night, this night, Lord, this night, Lord, this night, Lord, this night, oh God, this night, oh God, have your way. Lord, tonight, have your way. Lord, tonight, have your way. Have your way tonight. Lord, tonight, have your way. Lord, not bit by bit. Not bit by bit. We lay it all. We trust you. We know you are not wicked. We know you know what you're doing. We know you know where you are going. Lord, we know, we know, we know that you know what you are doing. We know there's no life that is given to you that you mismanage. 
All the difficulties that we have had is because not all has been on the altar. Not all has been placed so you couldn't walk. You have been waiting for everything to be brought in. While we thought we were waiting for you to walk on our lives, you say, no, I can't start walking because all is not here. All is not on the altar, so I can't walk. I can't walk. Lord, will you have your way tonight? Nothing to withhold again, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for this opportunity of prayer. Lord, I am not afraid to present these brothers and sisters to you knowing that you never waste a life. What has been wasted is because it's not in your hand. The years of sluggishness is because it's not completely in your hand. Some stay so close to the altar, but the offering was never slaughtered. They smell the offering of others, but theirs was never slaughtered. Others' blood had been sprinkled around. Some of it even fell on their lives, but theirs have never been offered. Tonight, Lord, have your way. Lord, from this meeting, oh God, even now, continue to begin your work. Accelerate it, oh God. Let your vision for these nations, let your vision for these lives, let it come to be. Lord, let's see what you are what you can do with a, a life that is yielded. And these young lives, oh God, some are in academics, some are in business, whatever. And you are saying, if only I can have it all, you will see what I can do with it. Lord, have your way tonight. As we lay it at your feet, please take it, oh God. That him right as a take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you. Please take it tonight. Begin what you want to do with our lives. From place to place, from heart to heart. Lord, I'm asking, set these lives on fire. Lord, please set these lives on fire. Consume these lives. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for what you choose to do here tonight. It go beyond our wisdom. Lord, continue your work tonight. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen.